group can impact the game? Or are there, is there not an added pressure, but like, is there an added focus on just trying to impact games to help the offensive defense? You know, I, I mean, I think Alex and, and uh, Ryan are both off to good starts. Um, you know, biggest thing that they can do is just stay within themselves and continue to do what they've done in the first couple of weeks. You know, I think Alex can be a weapon, um, you know, in terms of affecting field position um, and, and certainly turn the field over, um, you know, a couple of weeks ago in that, in that game against Boston College. And, um, you know, Ryan just got to stay consistent. You know, he's doing a great job on his kickoffs. And uh, when he has opportunity to score points, he's going out there and he's getting it done. So uh, for those guys, I just want them to continue to build on, on what they're doing and, and uh, help out in, in any way they possibly can. But, you know, they, they, can, they can only stay within themselves to, to be able to be uh, the best that they can be. Uh, Coach shared the sad news about Jalen being out. Um, you know, what has that changed your guys' return picture um, going forward? Yeah, you know, I, I, first off, I, I hate it for him because uh, he he's worked really hard and invested a lot into what this was going to be. So anytime something like that happens, you just you hate it for for you know him and and what he has to go through. But um, you know, I. We have capable guys back there, you know. So if you look at punt return, um, you know, I think Malik and uh, Luane are going are to be the two guys that, that we kind of turn our attention to and our focus to. And then in the uh, the kick return game, you know, we have we have guys that can do it, but Deuce obviously has done it before and, and been really good for us. Um, so, you know, we're going to evaluate that as this week goes and, and kind of see where where uh, what kind of decisions we come to at the end of the week. But, um, you know, I, I think I feel confident in both those units to be able to go out there and be effective um, with with either either person that's back there in punt return and, and the, the group of guys that could be back there in kick return. Setting the edge, game one to game two, how did the group do and what do they have to continue to improve upon? Uh, you know, I thought, generally speaking, um, from a – from a physicality standpoint, um, I did see some progress in terms of how we played the run, um, you know, and and it's always kind of an interesting thing because because the perception, obviously, from from a defensive end standpoint, is is that your role and responsibility is is an edge setter, but that's not necessarily always the case. I mean, uh, in in a lot of cases, our ends spill spill the ball, which means they have an inside leverage on a puller. Um, so, you know, and some of those things are, it's hard to see without knowing what the schemes are and, and what they're being asked to do. But, you know, I did think that, that from a, from a physical standpoint, um, I saw, I saw a lot of progress in how we played some of those gap schemes, the counters. Um, and when we played them well, we, we stopped them. Um, you know, there was still a couple of times it got a little bit loose, uh, which we need to continue to, to address and, and fix. But I do think, you know, in the, in the last two weeks of, or a week plus of practice that we've had, um, we are trending in the right direction in terms of making some of the improvement that we need to make and being better against the run. Coach, I wanted to ask you about Byron Turner's 15-yard penalty on the touchback. What did you see happen, and then what do you tell a veteran like that when he makes a not-so-smart play? Uh, you know, it was you know a, a momentum changer in the game. You know, we had just scored to go down one one, one score game, and um, you know had a touchback. And you know, it was one of those things that happened uh, in in full speed that I didn't even see it. It happened on the far sideline. I didn't see how it, how it played out. I obviously, grabbed an iPad and and saw what happened. And the biggest thing is is that in the moment, you know, not allowing frustrations of the game or frustrations of the situation to ever take over. Um, you know, because because. You know that's just a play that we can't have that, that set up some poor field position for us, and um, one that that as a as a whole football team we need to learn from because you know that's out of character for him. He's he, you know it's the first time I remember him getting any kind of uh, undisciplined penalty in, in a situation like that, and we just got to get better from it as a, as a whole team. For a lot of reasons, uh, his name being one of them, but also the fact he came from Georgia, like Jermaine did. Like I think people had these huge expectations for Marvin. How is he handling the start to his his time here? Is he taking things in, in from a big picture standpoint, or or is he frustrated about how it's going? Well, I mean, I think across the board, um, you know, everybody, coaches, players, everybody involved in, in this this program has a little bit of, of that frustration over over how everything started. Uh, Marvin wouldn't be any different in that. Um, I don't know that it has anything to do with, with anything other than he just you know, wants to be the very best that he can possibly be, and one of the one of the things that that I want him and all of our guys to do is try to simplify it a little bit, go back to to trying to have some fun playing the game. Um, you know, it, 
you can't change anything that's already happened at this point. You can learn from it. Go out and be the best that you can possibly be. And, and if you can do that, you can live with that at the end of it. Um, and, and that's what I want his focus to be. But really, it's what I want all of our guys' focus to be. I think through those first two games, there might have been like a combined 32 dropbacks uh, from Boston College and Georgia Tech. But Memphis seems to, I don't want to say like they're maybe not as balanced, but is the opportunity there for maybe this pass rush that you know, hasn't had the opportunity to affect the game? Are you guys seeing that as a, a potential opportunity to, to get into those that team into negative plays and giving you guys more leverage? Well, yeah, I, I think it's twofold. Um, you know, I think one part of it is, you know, and it's something we talk about up front a lot is you got to earn the right to rush the passer, meaning we got to be able to stop the run on first and second down to put people in those situations on third down where we can rush the passer. So, you know, we haven't dictated terms uh, in the first two games like, like we want to, so that's part of it. And then from a, what an opponent's strength and what, what their kind of identity is, um, you know, we've faced two teams that, that do have a run first, you know, identity in, in what they do. Um, you know, as we get into our schedule, there will be teams that, that might be more of a throw identity teams coming into it that will give us more pass rushing situations. But bottom line is, is um, obviously we don't control um, – what what plays we're seeing we got to put people in a situation where they feel like they have to throw the ball and the only way you do that is is to come out and stop the run early and then when we have our opportunities take advantage of them to rush the passer uh you know a few years ago when you guys had the, a tough start to a season uh one of the things coach norvell talked about was just keeping the same message to the recruits and the current players. Uh, obviously you guys had a couple hits i know you can't speak specifically in recruiting but but what how can you guys kind of fortify the message to the recruits and keep those guys? What were the conversations like this weekend, I guess? Uh, you know, I think the biggest thing with with with, uh, with our current roster and also for the guys that you're recruiting is continue the, the message of the belief in, in what the values of this program are. Um, you know, it wasn't an accident that we went from where we were in 2020 to, to where we were in 2023. And to think that everybody in the, in the program or – you know the philosophy of what we're trying to get done has totally been lost. Is is that's not real? Um, now has this year started the way that that we wanted to? Certainly not. But if you believe in in what the this program is about, if you believe in the culture, if you believe in the values, then um, you know let it play out a little bit and see. Because um, I believe in what this team can do. I believe in in where this program can continue to head. And you know we got to right the ship, but. The, the message to the, our players and, and to, to everybody that we want to have involved in the program is, is if you believed in it before, just have a little faith because we believe in what we're doing here. Anything else for Coach? Awesome. Thank you.